Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5.30. We begin tonight with breaking news out of South Fargo. Rescue crews were called to the Red River around an hour ago to save a man. It happened here off of Harwood Drive South in Fargo. Police say the man appears to be okay after being pulled from the river and then taken by ambulance. The man who was shot and killed after going on a stabbing rampage at a St. Cloud Mall, Dahir Adan, the man pictured on the left side of your screen, well, he has a brother. That's Abdullahi Adan on the right, and he's in the Cass County Jail. While the investigation into Dahar Adan now sits with the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force, his brother Abdullahi Adan is in jail tonight on drug charges. The charges against Abdullahi Adan stem from a traffic stop back in June. An officer smelled marijuana coming from the car and found various amounts of drugs and money. Adan appeared in court today asking to be furloughed so he could attend the funeral of his brother. Abdullahi Adan is one of four Muslim inmates suing the Cass County Jail, alleging, alleging they were fed pork and that that information wasn't being disclosed. Adan also has an ICE detainer issued against him, meaning local law enforcement are asked to hold him an additional 48 hours after being released. That's so federal officials can decide if they want to deport him. We'll have much more on this story tonight on Valley News Live at 6. UND police say it is still unclear whether a Snapchat picture was meant as a joke or what some are calling an act of racism. UND police and administration are investigating a harassment complaint after the picture was shared on Facebook, calling out the school to take action. Take a look at this picture in the message it says. The user says her friend left her phone in her room only to have three other students post the picture with a caption referencing her race. Now, Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop spoke with students about what happened. UND police say a report of harassment was made to them by a student involved along with another person. Words get thrown around today that shouldn't be, but what happened is blatant racism. I don't know, it just blows my mind that someone would do that and then post on social media about it. Because no, I don't think people really take into account how serious racism in these days. Some students say they want to know if it was a joke between friends or racism driven harassment. Many students say they do try to be careful what they post on social media. You, don't necess you aren't necessarily the closest friends with everyone on your Snapchat, so it's like, you know, it's the wrong person sees it that kind of just, you know, they don't know much about your, you know, your friends and they think that's racism. I know me and my friends, we make racial jokes, you know, I don't really get offended by it because I know they're kidding and stuff, but something like that, especially where other people can see it and it's come to this point where now U and D is getting in trouble because of it. That's a joke gone too far, yeah. The UND president released a statement to students today saying that he is shocked that anyone would think that this is a joke and that those students in the picture are not current or former student athletes. In Grand Forks, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. UND's Office of Student Rights and Responsibilities will investigate whether or not the students in the picture violated the code of student life. It was a sunny one out there today for Fargo Moorhead, but parts of the Northern Valley might be seeing some showers later. Let's send it over to meteorologist Robert Hahn to see which areas will be impacted. Robert? Uh, quite a few clouds mixed with that uh, sunshine today, but uh, we did have a nice mix of that. The sun allowed us to warm on up to right around 70 in most locations, a bit cooler off towards the north. 57 degrees up in Langdon, 64 in Roseau, 70 in Wapathon, also 70 in the Sisseton reporting station in Fargo. Missing at this point, but we're right around 70 degrees. Those winds have been breezy out of the east and northeast today, 10 to 20 miles per hour with some stronger gusts, and those will continue as we head through tonight and into tomorrow. Cloud cover, there are some clouds out there mixed with some sunshine, and underneath those clouds, we have seen a few showers across the far north, a few more trying to develop over in parts of Lakes Country, where we may even see a few bolts of lightning over there as we head through the evening. But here in Fargo, we're going to stay dry. Temperatures dipping down into the mid 60s by the 8 o'clock hour, low 60s by 9 o'clock. Another cool night tonight. One more quiet day tomorrow. And then some big changes as we head on into the weekend. We'll detail that in just a few minutes. Sounds good. Thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. We have some new information for you now on a crash out of Becker County, Minnesota. The victim in that crash is identified as 71 year old Jim Neesis. He is of rural Lake Park. He taught at Park Christian in Moorhead for many years and was also a former science teacher in Holly, Minnesota. 
The crash happened around 7.30 yesterday morning on Highway 2 between a pickup and a semi-tractor trailer. The sheriff says the pickup swerved onto oncoming traffic and hit the semi. The driver of the semi, Shane Eggy of Barnesville, is expected to be okay. This northwestern Minnesota man is facing a long list of charges after the alleged phys physical and sexual abuse of a family member. 29-year-old Jared Renner of Langby is facing five felony charges for alleged crimes against a female victim. Renner faces two counts of domestic assault by strangulation, criminal sexual conduct in the third degree that was regarding forced sexual penetration, and felony charges for stalking and threats of violence. If he's convicted, the most serious charge of criminal sexual conduct carries a maximum sentence of 15 years in prison. 60-year-old Joan Helsini Sido of Crookston has been arrested for allegedly assaulting a police officer. She's facing a fourth-degree assault charge for allegedly assaulting the officer while he was trying to make an arrest. It's a charge that carries a maximum sentence of one year in jail if she's convicted. She was also charged with disorderly conduct. A West Fargo canine helped catch a burglar earlier this morning. 42-year-old Kenneth Morris was taken into custody after police were called to a report of a burglary at 104 36th Avenue Place East. The homeowners there said they saw a man run out of their shed. That's when Disco bit Morris on his arm before he was arrested for burglary. Morris has no known address and was taken to the hospital for minor injuries. The man charged with raping a woman in a bathroom in a Mapleton, North Dakota gas station last December appeared in court today. He says he's not getting the medication he needs. Valley News Team's immigration and relocation reporter Bradford Eric tells us what happened. Wearing an orange jumpsuit and with his wrists and ankles bound, Abdul Rahman Ali appeared before the judge with the help of an interpreter. It was determined that Ali had not appeared in court yet for a preliminary hearing, and we reported to you earlier this year that he at one point refused to come out of his jail cell. About a week ago, Ali filed a letter with the court saying he had trouble communicating with his counselors and that, quote, I need more understanding. Ali's family was also present in the courtroom, again making the argument that he is mentally ill and needs help. When the situation was first reported, we couldn't verify Ali's immigration status. We checked with the Department of Homeland Security and Lutheran Social Services. Neither agency could confirm nor deny any information. Reporting outside the Cass County Courthouse, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. Ali's next court appearance is scheduled for October. A massive fire destroyed a grain elevator in Kennedy, Minnesota early this morning. A passing motorist reported the fire at 12.30 this morning at the Farmer's Elevator in Kennedy. It's 20 miles south of the Canadian border on Highway 75. And by the time crews arrived on the scene, it was fully engulfed. Crews from more than half a dozen surrounding towns were called in to help. The fire chief says their basic job was to keep it from spreading to houses on the block just behind the fire. It got uh, very hot very quick and we had to contain it. The sparks were going over town and uh, we had to make sure that the houses in town were safe. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. The elevator was partially full of wheat and soybeans. Only 48 days until Election Day, but many of you will soon be able to vote before then. In fact, in Minnesota, early voting starts this Friday. And today, Minnesota's Secretary of State made several stops in northwestern Minnesota talking about the early voting process. One of the stops included Minnesota State University in Moorhead. Secretary Steve Simon not only urged students to vote, but also helped them to understand how to do it. Simon says he completely understands some of the voter apathy we've likely heard about. These not voting, not is the answer. I understand the, the, the sort of impulse to not vote out of disappointment, to not vote out of disgust even with the political system or the candidates. I get all that. But at the end of the day, when you don't do it, you're kind of throwing away something of value that you have, which is a voice, a way to, to, to really steer the ship, and, um, and we can't have that. If you wish to vote early, you can learn how on mnvotes.org website, or you can simply visit the county auditor's office. Voters strongly oppose President Obama's plan to bring 110,000 Middle Eastern and African refugees to this country next year, up from 85,000 this year. The latest Rasmussen Report's National Telephone and Online Survey finds that nearly half of likely U.S. voters believe that the United States 
should take in no additional refugees from those areas. Just 12% agree with Obama's 110,000 figure, but another 6% think even more refugees than that should be brought here. Rasmussen reports says voters were opposed and also concerned about the national security threat of bringing Syrian refugees here this year. But Obama did it anyway, citing humanitarian concerns and the pressures these immigrants were putting on our European allies. The cost of EpiPens continue to be a hot topic among lawmaker, lawmakers. Today, a CEO faces Congress from the hot seat. It's still to come tonight. A lot of stormy weather just off to our east, but our weather, in a word, quiet. That will change, though, as we head towards the weekend. Your forecast details, including a look at that weekend forecast, coming up right after this.